grade 6 math number 6.5, Compare and Convert Units of Weight and Mass. Now, why would I say mass? Hmm. For customary measures, the amount of matter in an object is called the weight. You know, for U.S. measures, we say weight. But in the metric system, the amount of matter in an object is called mass. We use a conversion factor, a rate in which two quantities are equal, but use different units to convert between the units. For customary units of weight, here in the U.S., one pound is equal to 16 ounces. Now, this is dry weight, like a pound of flour, and one ton is 2,000 pounds. But in metric units of mass, 1,000 milligrams is equal to one gram. 100 centigrams is equal to a gram, and 10 decigrams is also equal to a gram. But then when we move to a decagram, it turns into 10 grams. See that? One hectogram is 100 grams, and one kilogram is 1,000. So you can see how everything is based on grams. That's kind of the center point, and they all have the name gram in them. See that? So you can see that 1,000 milligrams is very tiny because that's one, one gram is 1,000 milligrams. But one kilogram is very large because that's 1,000 grams, see, compared to the milligrams. So metric units are based on powers of 10. They're very easy to convert between and are not weight but are called mass, okay? Emma grew a big tomato in her garden, and it weighed three and a half pounds, just one tomato. So how many ounces does that make? Well, one pound is equal to 16 ounces, so we use 16 ounces over a pound as the conversion factor. Three and a half is equal to 3.5, so we're going to use that because it's easier to multiply with decimals. We use our conversion factor of 16 ounces as a pound. We turn it into a fraction, the 3.5, by putting it over 1, and we multiply it by the conversion factor. 3.5 times 16 over 1. 3.5 times 16 comes out to 560. We have one decimal hop in the, in the equation, so we put one decimal hop in the product. So it's 56 ounces. Big tomato. Tao's puppy weighed 750 grams. How many kilograms does it weigh? Well, one kilogram is 1,000 grams. So it doesn't even weigh one kilogram, does it? It's less than a kilogram. We can see that already. We're going to use the one kilogram over a thousand grams as our conversion factor. So the 750 grams is equal to the 750 grams over one is a fraction. And we multiply it by our conversion factor. And 750 times one is 750. One times a thousand is a thousand. Now we need to divide 1,000 into the 750, so we needed to add decimal points and zeros. When we're all done, we get 0.75. See, 1,000 goes into 7,500 seven times. Then we added another zero in the five, and we got 0.75. So the puppy weighs 0.75 kilograms. Now, if we looked at a chart, here's the grams that it weighed, and we divide by 10. 750 in decagrams becomes 75. It drops a zero because we divide it by 10. In hectograms, it becomes 7.5 because the decimal point got moved over to the left. And in kilograms, it moved over to the left one more time in front of the 7 became 0.75. So look at what it would be in milligrams. It would be 750,000 because as we move to the right, we multiply by 10. And as we move to the left in the metric system, we divide by 10. See? All right, what would these equal? Which is bigger? Less than, greater than, or equal? 42 grams or 420 milligrams? Which one's bigger? Well, 1,000 milligrams is just one gram. So 42 grams, well, that would be 42,000 milligrams, wouldn't it? So the 42 grams is much bigger. Which is Less than, greater than, or equal to 2 kilograms or 1,500 grams? Well, two kilo, 1 kilogram is 1,000 grams. So 2 kilograms would be 2,000 grams, wouldn't it? So the 2 kilo, kilograms is bigger. Which is bigger, 3 hectograms or 250 grams? 
Well, one hectogram is 100 grams. So three hectograms would be 300 grams. So the three hectograms were bigger, weren't they? So you can find these conversion charts in the back of your textbook, just like we did for the length and for the fluid ounces. You can find them for uh, weights and mass, too. And you can find them online. And they'll help you to convert back and forth between the units. And now you know how, between length and the fluid ounces, and now this weight and mass, how to use a conversion factor. We've done it three different ways with three different types of measure, haven't we? So keep uh, working hard. Keep doing what you can. We're slowly making progress, and we're getting through all of this sixth grade stuff, and I'll see you next video, okay? We're going to talk about precise measurement. I'll see you there. Bye.